What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a $500 gaming PC guide, one that I'm calling a part of my Yes You Can series build series. However, well, that meaning kind of is starting to diminish in a good way because now the PC market is becoming more normalized and PC parts don't cost quite as crazy amount of money. And yes, you definitely easily can build a $500 gaming PC. In fact, this one doesn't quite cost $500. <laughs> which I will get to more later in the video. However, we do have a good gamer on our hands, so let's talk about the parts we got here inside this build, and let's get into some benchmarks. Let's go. Alrighty guys, let's not waste any time here talking about the parts that make up this build because we do have benchmarks at the end of the video that you definitely want to check out because this is quite a gamer. So starting with the motherboard here, we have a micro ATX motherboard from Gigabyte, the DS3H B450 Wi-Fi. This part was actually a deviation from the original parts hunt video because in that video I did find a different motherboard, but as I went to go buy it, it was already gone. So I had to get back on the hunt and find something of equal value that simply would just work. And actually, I'm kind of glad that we did because that landed me back on Amazon Warehouse's page where I got this one for only $60. Now, it does look a little bit funny sitting in this case because this is a much larger case than what the motherboard really needs. This is a more mid-tower size case, and that's a micro ATX board. We got a bit of a space void here, but maybe some extra fans there will make it look a little better. However, we found such a great deal on Amazon to get this motherboard, I had to scoop it up. Next part we have here is the CPU, which I'm very proud of my findings for on this one. Here we have the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Normally these CPUs are extremely difficult to find in the wild, but essentially what we have here is a Ryzen 2600 in disguise. So what do I mean by a 2600 in disguise? Well, essentially it is kind of in on equal performance levels of a 2600. That's usually why they're compared to each other. However, the reason is it's a reduced nanometer size from 14 to 12 and offers higher clock speeds. This part was a fun one to hunt down though because it was my first time using Jawa as a marketplace to go search for some parts and we managed to get it for $85. From here on out, definitely I'm going to be considering Jawa as a lucrative part hunt marketplace in the future. Next part up, we have the RAM, and this again is previously a recommended part that I cannot stop recommending for budget PC builds. And what we have here is a pair of 8 gig DIMMs for a total of 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz, cast latency 16 from Silicon Power. Not quite much to look at in terms of RAM. Obviously, we don't have any RGB things going on, but they're not a terrible eyesore either, and it gets the job done for what we needed to do, and all for just $47. You can't really beat that. Next part up, and one I simply cannot stop recommending for storage, we've got a NVMe drive from Team Group, 512 gigabytes for $40. This drive obviously does not win any Glamour awards as far as its looks, but it checks off all the boxes of what we needed to do, and that being NVMe storage, plenty of it, 512 gigabytes at a good, cheap price. So what more can you ask for? This drive just checks all the boxes that we need for this budget build. All right, guys, I cannot be more excited to talk about this next part being the GPU. The heart of what makes a gaming system and the heart of what was such a pain and then about a year ago to actually find any kind whatsoever. So the RX 570 in the parts hunt video we found for $155. I didn't buy the parts that day, actually probably a couple weeks later, and I managed to find another RX 570 for $130. We already were coming down quite a bit and I discussed that in the video, but you guys go to eBay right now, check it. In fact, I'll put it on the screen. They're going for under $100 now. This build clearly, is not really worth $500 anymore. And that's good for you guys because I wanna showcase that. But to at least explain why we picked the GPU, well, it's an RX 570 and I've come to know it as a very capable gaming card at the time of the parts hunt video. Also, there wasn't a whole lot more that you could get for more money. So if you take it for what it is, $155 can definitely get you more than this RX 570 nowadays. I would definitely recommend trying to do that. And I'll have some alternatives for you guys listed in the description of this video. However, RX 570, four gigs, Still a great gaming card. To power everything up, we found ourselves an EVGA White Series 500 watt power supply on Amazon for just $35, brand new. Now clearly this isn't a top tier power supply, but this also isn't a top tier gaming rig. And yeah, uh, I'm not saying that you wanna sacrifice your components, but this is a power supply I have come to rely on and I don't have any particular negative things to say about it. And it's all relative, right? This is a budget gaming PC. So let's talk about this goofy case here that is housing our small PC build. Well, that wasn't intentional and really I have two main reasons for that. 
aesthetics, and price. In the original parts hunt video, we tried to find a micro ATX case, which we did for the price that we wanted to pay for it. However, when I went to go buy it, which was days later, even maybe a couple weeks, the price really went up for some odd reason. I don't know why, and I had to find an alternative. So what we have here is the Rosewill Prism S500, which I bought off Amazon for just $65. Now I'd say it is a bit interesting to look at because if you notice the PSU mounting location is up top, so something a bit different, I'd say let's call that a feature, not a bug. But speaking of features, this case is loaded with them. It comes with four ARGB fans, two side LED strips that are synced with those RGB fans, tempered glass side panel with attached captive thumb screws for easy removal, a vented rear side panel where you can install more fans behind it to offer more airflow. Obviously, tons of space for large components and even water cooling. Honestly, the thing I think I'm most impressed with with this case is just the sheer build quality. It was very easy to build in. There's no detectable areas where it felt like they got cheap with it. But I can see where it may not be your cup of tea. I thought the case was interesting. I wanted to build in it. It cost only $65 and has tons of features to it. I went for it. So guys, that is the build in summary. And let's be frank, I know what you guys are after. Let's just see how well this under $500 gaming PC can perform. So, as you guys can see, this PC performs very, very well in 1080p resolutions. And even though those benchmarks were in lower settings, we can definitely bump it up and get some still very good gameplay out of it. But I think the main takeaway with this build is it's not $500 anymore, really. It was when I was hunting down parts and it's not quite anymore. The GPU market is returning to normal, which is good for us gamers and us budget builders. So if you guys enjoyed this one and you like doing budget builds, well then check out the video I got on screen here. That is the process we went through on building this one up. Obviously a little bit different now since the prices have returned more to normal. But thanks for tuning into this one though. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you in the next one.